Jackson correctly, then Fireman Griffin and Fireman Jones share a £1 million reward. As always, they've got three lifelines. They can go 50-50, they can phone a friend, or they can ask this very eager-looking audience. Right, Tim, Darren, lots of luck. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Question number one is for £500. Here it comes. A traditional boomerang is made from which substance? Clay, stone, glass, wood. I'm pretty sure I know the answer to that one, Tim. Um, I think it's wood. I totally agree. So I'm happy with that. You happy with that, Tim? Yeah, I think so. Final answer. So right answer, you've got £500. <laughs> Tim, you're looking at this computer like it's a cage of rattlesnakes. It'll be, it'll be all right. Yeah, there are good. no trick questions. Uh, I have to say, they do get harder as the money goes up, but there are no trick questions. This would guarantee you £1,000. Here it comes. Which of these entertainers famously wore a bowler hat? Max Miller, Charlie Chaplin, Frankie Howard, Tommy Cooper. I, I think Charlie Chaplin is looking favourite. Tommy Cooper was a fez. Fez, definitely, yep. Yeah. Max Miller. No hat at all, is it, Max Miller? Less hair than me. <laughs> Frankie Howard, no hat at no, all. I think I, it's Charlie Chaplin. Yeah, I would say. I'd be very surprised if it wasn't, so I'll go along with that. Final answer, Charlie Chaplin. It's the right answer, you've got £1,000. <laughs> you How are you feeling? Pretty confident so far. <laughs> well, no, I mean, for guys who go into blazing buildings, or whatever, you're strangely yeah. sort of. Yeah, well, it's a different environment for us. Yeah. So we're very used to burning buildings. We're not quite used to uh, computer screens and bright lights and uh, tricky questions, but hopefully. And the cameras. Do you love it? What, going to work every day? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah. It's the first job I can honestly say that I never ever in the morning or in an evening say, oh, going to work today. So that, that's half the battle, isn't it? Yeah. It's hugely rewarding. Mm. It must be. Through difficult times. And then uh, the rest of the time, there's a tremendous camaraderie that... Yeah. OK. So how are you going to do? Uh, I'd, um, I'd be quite happy if we got to that seventh question. 50,000? Yeah. yeah. Right, you have oh, £1,000. Yeah. yeah, it's early days yet, Chris. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Fingers crossed. You have 1000 uh, that's guaranteed. You have all three lifelines. Question number three is for £2,000. Here it comes. In which sport is lock a position? Cricket, hockey, rugby union, basketball. I do know I think, this. I think I know I as well. Think, yeah, it is rugby union. I go with that, definitely. Final answer? Final answer, rugby union. How did I know you'd know that? It's the right answer. You've got £2,000. <laughs> So far, okay, at this moment, uh, Darren and Tim have got £2,000. They're guaranteed at least £1,000. They are nine away from £1 million. They are four away from £50,000. They have not yet touched any lifelines. We'll take a break. Don't go away. Welcome back to the second part of tonight's All Firefighter Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, where Tim and Darren are blazing a trail with £2,000. They have all three lifelines remaining. Still calm? Yep. Are you? More. What makes a good firefighter? Well, being calm, definitely. Also, making decisions, the right decisions, quickly. We were talking earlier and you were saying, I thought this was beautiful, you were saying it's an honour to have the opportunity in this world to save somebody's life. Well, I think so, definitely, and also not everybody gets that, but in our job, it does come around more, often more than once. And it uh, doesn't get any better than that. OK. You have £2,000. It's good. You are four away from 50 grand. You have three lifelines untouched. Question number four is for £5,000. Have a look. Which of these mainland European capital cities is closest to London? Brussels, Madrid, Berlin, Rome. Have you got any idea, Tim? I'm... I think it's Brussels. OK, your reasoning being? It's... Rome's a long way. Yeah, I see that one. Berlin's a good way. Been to Berlin, it's a reasonable flight. 
Brussels doesn't take long to get to. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Madrid. Whereabouts in Spain is Madrid? You know, north, south, east, Madrid's west? Right in the middle. I would have gone for Brussels myself as well. I know people can commute to Brussels to, to work, um, so which kind of indicates that it's the closest. <laughs> it's definitely Brussels. Okay. Let's play it. Final okay. answer, Brussels. Shall we? We'll do it. I'm with it. <laughs> I'm final answer, Brussels. It's the right answer. You're five thousand pounds. <laughs> As you say, people commute. Uh, it's about 200 miles away. 200 miles by air, apparently. Um, you have £5,000. You have not yet touched any lifelines. You kept that back. Uh, question number five is for £10,000. Money now going up. Uh, you would lose £4,000 if you give me a wrong answer, but it's a chance to double your money. You have all three lifelines. Here it comes. Braben is a variety of which fruit? Banana, strawberry, apple, peach. I think I know this one, Tim. It's an apple. Apple, definitely, yeah. Final answer? 95% sure, Tim. Final answer, Apple. Yeah. Definitely. You look terribly pleased with yourself. <laughs> Definitely. It's the right answer. You have 10,000. <laughs> what is this thing about you in uniform? <laughs> you know, I mean, is it a myth or do women go strange when you go past? Well, they seem to. You know, I don't get it myself either. I don't whistle at fire engines when they go past. <laughs> but if you, if you weren't wearing a uniform, do they just go, look what the cat's dragged in? <laughs> Definitely, yeah. Do they? Well, yeah. It's the uniform, the, the, yeah. the helmet and all the gear. Yeah. Same? Definitely. Definitely. They're often disappointed when they see <laughs> old firemen. They, you know, they want young old firemen, really, in yeah. their 20s. So it's best to keep your helmet on. <laughs> <laughs> OK. You have £10,000. You are. So this is good. I don't want to preempt anything, but you are two away from £50,000. You have three lifelines. £10,000, question number six is for 20000 Here it comes. Who played the voice of Charlotte the Spider in the 2007 film Charlotte's Web? Kim Basinger, Meg Ryan, Julia Roberts, Kate Winslet. I think I know this one, Tim. Yeah. Went to see it with the kids, yeah. Did you? Yeah, fortunately. Well done. I believe it's Julia Roberts. Well, I'd say I believe. I would be 99% sure it's Julia Roberts. That's high. That's it good. is very high. Yeah. What's the 1% then? Just a little tiny? Just, just for fun, really. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, you have the clue? Uh, my wife and kids went to see it as well. I have no idea. But so you trust Darren I, so totally. I am quite happy with 99%. So I'm, I'm prepared to go with that. OK, mate. Final answer. Final answer. You just won £20,000. <laughs> Guys, you're on a roll. It's good here, isn't it? I knew he'd come in useful adventure. <laughs> <laughs> After all these years of waiting. Right, serious business. Keep your helmet on. You've got 20000 this is for £50,000, and if you did get the £50,000, if you decide to play it and give me the correct answer, it would be the minimum amount you would leave here with tonight. The minimum amount. Serious business. Here it comes. What nationality was the playwright Henrik Ibsen? Belgian. Norwegian. Swedish. Swiss. I know what I'm drawn towards straight away, Tim. Have you got any, any ideas? Uh, I think he was uh, either Norwegian or Swedish, but I'm not entirely sure. I'm, I'm drawn to Swedish, but I'm not sure at all. I remember it from educating Rita, because I but know how she, well do you remember uh, it? she studied Ibsen, I'm sure she did. Did it mention where he's from at all? Didn't, no. <laughs> That's no good then, is it? No, not a lot of help. <laughs> what do you Karen, think? what do you think? You, you seem very positive. I was kind of drawn to Swedish as well. It certainly sounds Scandinavian, but yeah. I'm, I'm guessing. If you're wrong, you lose £19,000. You're not sure. There's nothing right? on my screen. You're not sure. So I think we'll have to use something, aren't we? Definitely. 
what, what are you thinking? I'm thinking, phone a friend. What do you want to do? The lifelines are precious, but there's no point going home with a thousand pounds and three lifelines in the bank, is there? Can't spend them in the shops. I'm going for phone a friend, that's my, uh... Okay. Uh, who have you got? Who'd be good, who'd know this? I think we'll, we will phone my friend Jan. Okay. Where's she? She's in Leicestershire, okay. in Lockett Harbour. Uh, you can talk to her, presumably? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Phone Jan, tell her the question. Um, 30 seconds, four possible answers. If you're still not happy, you've still got to ask the audience. And you've still got a 50 50. Okay. Hello? Jan? Yes? Chris Tarrant, good evening. Oh, good evening. Well, you know what we're doing? That I can guess, yes. Well, what's your guess then? What do you think we're doing? <laughs> Somebody's got stuck on a question? Well, exactly. <laughs> now, I've got Darren and Tim here. They're doing rather well, actually. Oh, uh, they're stuck on one particular question. They think you can help them with it. Oh. Uh, it's quite serious business. It's worth £50,000. <gasps> All right, darling, so the next voice you hear will be Darren. He'll tell you the question. There are still four possible answers. One of them is worth £50,000. OK? OK. Right, Darren, lots of luck. Fingers crossed, mate. Go. Jan, what nationality was the playwright Henrik Ibsen? Belgian, Norwegian, Swedish or Swiss? Norwegian. Is that 100%, Jan? 99.9. .9. Thank you very much. OK. Good luck. Thank you. Ooh. Not Swedish. No. Well, I'm really happy with that, are you? Yeah, 100%. Norwegian. Yep. Final answer, Norwegian. You just won £50,000. <laughs> Yeah. Have a look. This is what you've done. Now, that is the minimum amount. You're not necessarily finished at all. Do you want to take it? You can hold on to that, Chris. <laughs> okay. Hold on to that, please. Right, look after it there. That's the minimum amount you'll go away with from here tonight. You'll go away with at least 50 grand. Feel good? Very good. Very. Darren, you look kind of stunned. Yeah. It's a lot of money, isn't it? £50,000. Yeah. It's fantastic. About 10 minutes' work. It's not bad at yeah. all. Right, have a look at question number eight. You obviously might as well play this. You know you can't lose that cheque. You've got 50 grand at least to go home with. Have a look at question number eight. It's for £75,000. You have got two lifelines. You might as well play it. You can guess whatever you need to do. Use both lifelines if you have to. Have a look at it. It's question number eight of a possible 12. Throstle is an old-fashioned name for which bird? Nightingale. Song thrush. House Martin, Starling. I know which one I'm drawn to, Tim. I think it's a nightingale. Yeah. Mm, I think... I don't know why, I think I've seen it somewhere. Maybe in a poem, I'm not sure where. I could be absolutely wrong. I have no idea. Would you like to go for it, or do you want to...? Mm. you got two lifelines. Yeah, it's sure. It's your call. You've got 50-50 left, you can ask the audience. A throstle is an old-fashioned name for which bird? Nightingale, song thrush, house martin, starling. So we could go 50-50, and it could... ..get rid of it completely, and then we may know the next question. What's your yeah. feelings? 50-50. OK, mate. And then if, if, we, if we're not sure, we can still ask the audience and it gives them a better chance with only two. OK. Let's do that. OK, right. Computer, take away two random wrong answers. Leave Darren and Tim the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. Nightingale or thrush? Throstle is an old-fashioned name for which bird? Nightingale or song thrush? You've got 50,000 guaranteed. It's 75,000. Obviously, thrush looks a bit like thross. Yeah. Which is the the worrying thing. Let's ask the audience. Because okay. if, if we get through this one, we've got a, a go at the next one, which we might know. Okay. Yeah? Could okay. We'll ask the audience. That's a plan. 
OK, serious business. It's for £75,000. Audience, this is the question. Just two possibilities left. Throstle is an old-fashioned name for which bird? Now, A on your keypads is nightingale. B is song thrush. Serious money. It's worth £75,000. Please all vote now. Sixty-five percent say song thrush. <laughs> What's that then? I don't know. Thirty-five percent say nightingale. You thought it was nightingale. Sixty-five percent of the sort. It's saying it's not. It's thrush. Now this is one of those. You might as well play this. You can't lose in it. So you might as well have a go. But which way do you go, Darren? You were sure it's nightingale. I wasn't sure. I was just drawn towards it. And if Tim, what's your thinking? Well. I've got no idea myself, but I would be inclined to go with 65%. Unless you can convince me that you've got a strong feeling on Nightingale. Well, it, before the, the, the four options came up, I thought Throstle. I thought Nightingale, sorry. So, the 65% is a high percentage, and I will look rather stupid if I go against that. I look stupid either way now. <laughs> <laughs> if I go with it and I'm wrong, I should have stuck with my instincts. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? Song thrush. OK. You sure? I just think 65 to 35 when really you've only got an inkling, haven't you? Yeah. You can't lose on this, you've got 50 we can't, you know that. We can't lose, no, so that's, that's, that's a nice thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it will fill up with loss, though, a 50-50 chance. We'll, we'll go with the audience, if, if you're happy with that. Let's do it. OK. Not Nightingale, no. We'll go with 65% of the audience. Are you ready for that? Yeah. Final answer, song thrush. Final answer, Darren? Final answer. One of those is worth £75,000, one of them isn't. Was the right answer? You got seventy-five thousand pounds. And you were at all show, were you? Seventy-five thousand pounds. Fantastic. They got seventy-five grand. How are you feeling? Better than I was. Yeah. Yeah. A throstle is a. I remember as a kid in Berkshire. A throstle is a is a thrush. Is a song thrush. Have a look. That's what you've done. It's getting better, isn't it? Beautiful. Mm. You have £75,000. <laughs> You're guaranteed £50,000 no matter what. Now, this is serious. You have no lifelines left. They've gone. You could double your money here to £150,000. Huge amount of money. You would drop 25 if you gave me a wrong answer. You're guaranteed 50. You've got 75 at this moment. Have a look at it. It's question number nine. You're actually only four away from one million, but you have no lifelines. Here it comes. Which of these historical figures was born Elizabeth Gurney? Elizabeth Fry. Elizabeth Gaskell. Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Elizabeth Garrett Anderson. Do you know? No. Me either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you drawn to any at all? Well, I would say it's not Elizabeth Barrett Browning, so I think, no. This is just a complete guess that she was probably Elizabeth Browning and then got married and became Elizabeth Barrett Browning. So the same for Garrett Anderson, then? Do you know who any of those four are? I know Elizabeth thrives on the back of a £5 note, I believe. No help at all. I think Elizabeth Barrett Browning is uh, an author of some kind. That's not going to help us anyway, is it? No. If we no. don't know, if we've not heard of the Gurney surname, it's not going to help us, is it? Well, let's just have a go, shall we? You think so? Yeah. We've got 50, we're only going to lose 25. If we're right, one in four chance we're on 150. But, Tim, you haven't got a clue. <laughs> it's very game. We've got one in four, we've got one in four chance. Yeah. Have. Let's go for it. <laughs> what would you say then? I've got no idea. <laughs> I'll make the decision to go for it. You tell, tell us what the answer is. You fill in the detail. 
Uh, I'm drawn to A or B then. Okay. Why? I quite like A and B. Well, <laughs> let's go for Elizabeth Fry then. Oh, <laughs> just because I said Gaskell. Yes. So that one of us is going to be right. Yes. Or hopefully. Right. It's a lot of money to lose. Twelve and a half thousand pounds. Well, are we making the decision? We're just we are going to go for it. Well, you seem to be. Well, what do you want to do? It's a huge jump, 250. I say, gamble, no idea, but let's go for Elizabeth Fry. <laughs> Purely on the basis that you said Gaskell. <laughs> and if we're wrong, I'll get the first round in. OK, mate. You only get this chance once, don't you? Let's do it. Final answer. Let's go for it. Yep. Elizabeth Fry. Final answer, Elizabeth Fry. You said with massive confidence. With no idea whatsoever. Why do you think the others are so obviously like the Barrett and the Garrett? Why can't it be them? Could, could well be. <laughs> <laughs> we've really got no idea, but we've got 50 in the bank, so we'll go for it. Why not Gaskell? Because you're going to go for Gaskell. I didn't want him to be the one to get it wrong. <laughs> it's very, very I'd, rather, I'd him. rather take it on the chip. I have no idea how you did that, and nor have you. Someone likes us, Chris. Because she's on the back of a fiver. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just have a look at this. <sighs> £150,000. But we don't want to give you that. <laughs> You've got that at this moment. I'd love you to get the next one. Um, Could be entertaining, Chris, couldn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, serious business, right? You've got 50 grand. That's guaranteed. That's all that's guaranteed. I say all, it's massive. But... You've got 50 grand. At the moment, you've got 150,000. Question number 10 is worth 250,000 pounds, a quarter of a million. If you give me a wrong answer, you would lose 100,000 pounds. In the Bible, which of these characters is the cousin of Esther? Malachi, Miriam, Martha, Mordecai. Why are you grinning, Tim? I'm not very religious. How did I guess that? I have no idea. My only thought is that both Esther and Malachi are both books of the Old Testament. Martha, Miriam and Mordecai aren't. It's a lot of money to gamble. Are you, are you sure those are the three? I know uh, all the books of the Old Testament, yeah. And Malachi... And Malachi's the last book, and uh, Esther's... Esther's definitely in the Old Esther's Testament. Esther's definitely in there. I think that's too tenuous, but... Yeah, I do as well, mate. I Just think you might be right. What would you not. say? Well, we haven't really pinned it down yet. You don't have to play this, you know you don't. But just, just supposing you felt, what, what would you actually go for then? I'd definitely go for Malachi. If it was for 75 and we only dropped 25, you'd have gone for Malachi comfortably. Yeah. Yeah. But it's too much. Because, it? It, because there's, there's no other reasoning for the other ones. And that's... Tim, so can I just remind you, he would have gone for Nightingale. Yes, <laughs> that's true. And Gaskell. Yes. And Gaskell. <laughs> yes. So, talk to him so we'll, them. We'll, we'll let the other guys have a chance, Tim, if it's OK with you. Let's take the money. Yeah. That's why you say, like, let's take the money. That's a fine. 150 answer. grand, isn't that? That'd be very Feel good. Nice. good. Fantastic. Unbelievable. Give them a big hand. They can give them a huge hand. They go away. With one hundred and fifty thousand pounds, serious nice work. And I will tell you, if you'd said Malachi, you would have just lost one hundred thousand pounds because the right answer was Mordecai. So you certainly did the right thing. Have a look. You take it this time. There you are. One hundred and fifty thousand pounds. Bless you guys. Take it away. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Thanks for what you do.
150,000 pounds. Fantastic. So, Tim and Darren gleefully slide back up the fireman's pole with £150,000. It does mean it's time to welcome our next two firefighters, a lady, Francesca Flynn and Charlie Pugsley. <laughs> Hello, you two. How are you, mate? Hello, Darren. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Brother and sister, Charlie and Francesca, are both firefighters in Orpington and Kent. Francesca was the first to join the fire service, leaving behind the glamorous casino life where she was a croupier. She's married to yet another firefighter, Jim, who she met during her 20-week training, where she was just one of five women training with 100 men. They now have three daughters between the ages of five and 19. Charlie, having had a succession of terrible jobs, followed his sister's lead a year later and trained to join the fire service. He is now a fire investigator, figuring out some of the often bizarre causes of fires. He's been married to Andrea for 10 years, and they too have three daughters. Francesca's only beef about being in the minority as a woman in the service is that female firefighters don't seem to cause quite the same sort of steamy excitement among men that male firefighters cause among women. <laughs> right, lots to talk about. You've seen how much money could be won. Maybe you win some more. Here we go again. Twelve more questions, three brand new lifelines, and still a chance of one million pounds. They just might do it. Lots of luck. Francesca and Charlie, let's play. Who wants to be a millionaire? OK, question number one is for 500 pounds. Here it comes. A container storing objects from the present and meant to be opened in the future is called a time what? Capsule, carton, cup, carafe. Capsule? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I agree, I think it's also capsule. Yeah, capsule. That's the right answer, you got 500 pounds. <laughs> Right, I'm sure I don't need to remind you, last point which you could go home with nothing, it hasn't happened for a very long time, I'm sure it won't. You have all three lifelines, you are one away from a guaranteed £1,000. Here it comes. Which cookery term refers to the rapid boiling of a liquid to make it thicker and more concentrated? Rebooting, repleting, refracting, reducing. It's reducing. Yeah. Well, I think it's reducing as well. He yes. said nervously. You hadn't a clue. I know. <laughs> That's why I went second, because then that way I can hear what the brain well, says. Well, you reboot a computer, you replete something that needs repleting. And you refract that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's reducing. Oh, I'm quite happy. Yep. We're reducing. Final answer. answer reducing. All right, answer. you've got £1,000. <laughs> About. I'd just like to go on for a little bit. You have £1,000, you have all three lifelines. Question number three is for £2,000. Here it comes. Suede is a variety of which material? Linen, flax, leather, hessian. Do you know this one? I thought it was leather. Yeah. However, um, I'm quite willing... <laughs> You're you talking to, like uh, a robot. That would be the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's leather. I think, Do you think it's, it's leather, leather as well. We both think it's leather. Well, that's good. Is it the final answer? It is the final answer, Chris. Yes, please. The right answer. You got two thousand pounds. <laughs> that was a bit of a career jump, from being a croupier to being a fire yeah. lady. There, there was a gap. I had my my not, now nineteen-year-old daughter, um, and then. When she was very little, I just thought I want to be with her, yeah. and mother her, um, but I wanted, I had to earn a, a full-time wage because at the time I was a single mum. Mm -hmm. So, um, I but you would have had all. I mean, croupiers really have to put all the makeup and the whole. Yes, look, you know, I went from and the big uh, long nails and trying all that. to be a size back in the 80s. You know, it's very fashionable to look like Nancy Reagan and be mm -hmm. the size zero and lollipop head so I went from trying to diet down to what was never yeah. gonna happen yeah. 
to uh, then I needed to really kind of um, butch up a bit. And have you butched up enough yet? Well, you see my shoulders. Very nice. Good grief. Good lord. <laughs> That's kind of scary. <laughs> it was a brother's friend. And you, you decided after that? I went in a couple of years later. Mm. I think we, uh, yeah, I think Fran probably went in first, got in a bit quicker. And you set you a good always example. wanted to do it, didn't you? I think we're both people. We both talked people, about people. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we both like people. Now, let's try and get you some money. We've seen rather a lot of money go away tonight. Let's get some more. You have £2,000. You have all three lifelines untouched. Question number four is for £5,000. Have a look. The line, how many roads must a man walk down, features in which Bob Dylan song? Mr Tambourine Man, Blowing in the Wind, Rainy Day Women, Lay, Lady, Lay. This is one of those awful moments where I actually have this record at home. <gasps> Charlie, but... don't tell me you don't know the answer. Oh. I think it's blowing in the wind, but I was always rubbish at singing and lyrics. But um, you, you have to think about it, and I'll try no, and sing I, it to No, I myself. definitely don't know it. I can sing lee 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 lee. Don't put me off. <laughs> but I don't. I don't know the lyric. I think I'm 90 to 95 percent sure. Blowing in the wind. Um, I'm fairly sure it's not lay lady lay. I'm fairly sure it's not rainy day women. And I'm 10% Mr. Tambourine Man. What do you think? Shall we um, do 50 50? If we had a 50 50, and if that evil computer didn't just leave the two favourites, I would feel happier. But OK, shall we do that? If you're happy with that. Yep, we'll do that. We'll go 50 50, please, Chris. OK. Uh, computer, take away two random wrong answers. Leave Francesca and Charlie the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. Okay. Let's go for it, shall we? I feel fairly sure it's blowing in the wind. Yep. I mean, yep, you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Final answer. Final answer. Final answer. Yep. Good blowing in the wind. The right answer. You got five thousand pounds. Two lifelines. You've got a phone and friend left, you've got to ask the audience left. You got five thousand pounds. Question number five is for ten grand. Here it comes. In 2005, Ken Bates became the chairman of which football club? Leeds United, Sunderland, West Ham United, Nottingham Forest. Your football fan shop. <laughs> It's very hard to be in the fire brigade and not take a bit of notice of football. I'm not a big fan, but um, Do you know this? I have an idea, yeah, because okay, he, ask the audience? he used to be Chelsea man, and yeah. I'm pretty sure he went to Leeds after that. I'm sure he's not a West Ham. I'm... I'm 95% sure it's Leeds United. Oh, that 95% again, Charlie. <laughs> this fence on the city. Is, on the fence. <laughs> is it getting painful? Yeah. Should we go for that? I'd, yeah. I'd say, let's go, yeah, let's go Leeds United. Yeah, OK. It's fine. We've had a lovely day. We've had a lovely day out. <laughs> Final answer. Final answer. Yep. Final answer. I'll go with you. Charlie? Yep. Yep. Please. Please what? <laughs> Make it good news. You just won ten thousand pounds. Oh, You've still got that phone a friend. You've still got this audience. You are two away from 50,000. Have a look at question number six. You could double your money here to 20,000 pounds. Who wrote the children's story, Mr. Peabody's Apples, published in 2003? Crikey. Britney Spears, Rolf Harris, Julie Andrews, Madonna. It's worth 20,000 pounds. Charlie, you're looking excited. No. <laughs> Oh, um, I didn't see him looking excited. I'm thinking... It's these random body twitches. I remember Madonna, I'm fairly sure Madonna a few years ago, did a children's book. Yeah, but that was... It, I've got that Madonna book, and it's not... It's the English Roses. Right, OK. So it's not Madonna. Should that I have written another book? She might have she done two might books. She might have, yes. Yeah, I think actually. it's fairly safe to say it's probably not Britney Spears. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
<laughs> Who knows? Um, maybe the audience. I just realised we've got that lifeline there. You've got to ask the audience, you've yeah. got to find a friend. I think we should ask the audience. <sighs> Do you think? Over to you. OK. We'll find a friend. Um, it's up to you. It's your call. I couldn't think only Leo would know that, but I don't... I think we'll go with the audience. I don't know. I don't think we've actually upset the audience yet, so no. I think we want to get in I there. I think they look lovely. Yeah. <laughs> OK, right, audience, uh, this is the question. Serious business, it's for £20,000. Who wrote the children's story Mr Peabody's Apples, published in 2003? Now, A on your keypads is Britney Spears. B is Rolf Harris. C is Julie Andrews. D is Madonna. All vote now. Thirty-seven percent to say Madonna, twenty-five percent Julie Andrews, thirty-four percent say Rolf Harris, four uh, percent say Britney Spears. Now, what do you do with that? I think it's time to uh, get the phone out, really, don't you? Because well, I, mean, I, I can't really remember seeing many occasions on the programme where you've got that much of an even split. I just don't know who of our friends would know that. Um, Shall we phone um, Leo? I think we. Uh... Don't Who is it? Leo? Yes, Leonor. Auntie. Well, phone Auntie Leo, uh, tell her the question, four possible answers, and then it's up to you what you decide to do at the end of that. Okay. Why would she know? Well, she's very good on um, um, novels and. Um, Books Art and apples. culture, but you know her children are now grown up, so I'm just hoping that she will have kept an eye on okay. me. Hello. Leo. Yes. Chris Tarrant here. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. It's no good laughing manically. I won't go away. Um, well, you know what's happened. Oh, dear. Yeah, this is phone a friend time. OK. Right, and Francesca says you're bound to know. Oh, right, OK. Yeah, well, she didn't quite say that. She said you might. Uh, it's for £20,000. They're doing rather well. Right. Uh, next voice you hear will be Francesca. She'll tell the question. There are still four possible answers. All right, my darling? OK. OK, fingers crossed. Right, Francesca, lots of luck. Your time starts now. Leo, who yeah. wrote the children's story Mr Peabody's Apples, published in 2003... Was it Britney Spears, Rolf Harris, Julie Andrews, or Madonna? Can you t say the name of the, the children's book again? Mr. Peabody's Apples. Oh, Britney God. Spears, Rolf Harris, Julie Andrews, or Madonna? Six seconds. I, maybe Britney Spears, but I really don't know. Okay. It's, well, I really don't know. Okay. <sighs> we can't go any further. Ooh. We can't go any further than that, really, because um, we're stumped, aren't we? Well, she thinks it might be Britney Spears. Yes, yeah, she's very good. She keeps an eye on, on a lot of, uh, you know, modern culture, but... Um... Who wrote the children's story, Mr Peabody's Apples, published in 2003? Britney Spears, Rolf Harris, Julie Andrews, Madonna. The audience have gone 37% Madonna. 25% Julie Andrews, 34% Rolf Harris, 4% Britney Spears, but Auntie Leo says she thinks it might be Britney Spears. All of which... Mm, it's very muddy waters. Doesn't help you a fact, no, does it? No, does it doesn't really? really. You know, we could sit Charlie? here and deliberate, but... Uh, I can trust my, uh, or our auntie very much, actually, but um, she didn't sound sure. She wasn't sure. So I think it's a case of... Uh, Take the money. That cheesy old line of had a great time. <laughs> And take the money. We're going to... Yeah, I agree with you're you. You're happy that we're going to... OK, give them a big hand. Charlie we'll and Francesca it. go away with £10,000. <laughs> what would you have gone for? Come on. So we have to do it. What would you have gone for? Would you have gone for Brittany on Auntie Leah? What would you have uh, gone I would have, if we were going to be really, really brave, we'd have gone with Auntie Leah, but she wasn't sure. The answer was Madonna. Oh... Um... She clearly wrote another book called Mr. Peabody's Apples, published oh. in 2003. But you wouldn't have got there, no. I think.
Give them a big hand. They go away with £10,000. Bless you guys and ladies for everything you do for Sadly, the sirens just called time earlier on tonight. Fearless firefighters Tim and Darren played a high-risk strategy. It certainly was high-risk. It paid off, though, to the tune of £150,000. Francesca and Charlie here end the show with another ten grand. So from me and our brave firefighters here on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, good night. See you next time. It's the first job I can honestly say that I never, ever, in the morning or in an evening, say, oh, I'm going to work today. So that's half the battle, isn't it? Yeah, it's hugely rewarding. Mm. It must be through difficult times, and then uh, the rest of the time there's a tremendous camaraderie. That yeah. Okay. So how are you going to do? Uh, I'd um, I'd be quite happy if we got to that seventh question. Fifty thousand. Yeah. yeah. Right. You have a oh, thousand pounds. Yeah. It's early days yet, Chris. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Fingers crossed. You have one thousand. Uh, that's guaranteed. You have all three lifelines. Question number three is for two thousand pounds. Here it comes. In which sport is lock a position? Cricket, hockey, rugby union, basketball. I do know I this. I think I know I as well. Yeah, it is rugby union. I go with that definitely. Final answer. Final answer, rugby union. How did I know you'd know that? It's the right answer. You've got £2,000. <laughs> OK, at this moment, uh, Darren and Tim have got £2,000. They're guaranteed at least £1,000. They are nine away from £1 million. They are four away from £50,000. They have not yet touched any lifelines. We'll take a break. Don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back to the second part of tonight's All Firefighter. Who wants to be a millionaire? Where Tim and Darren are blazing a trail with £2,000. They have all three lifelines remaining. Still calm? Yep. Are you? More. What makes a good firefighter? Well, being calm, definitely. Also, making decisions, the right decisions, quickly. We were talking earlier and you were saying, I thought this was beautiful, you were saying it's an honour to have the opportunity in this world to save somebody's life. Well, I think so, definitely. And also, not everybody gets that, but in our job, it does come around more, often more than once. And it uh, doesn't get any better than that. OK. You have £2,000. It's good. You are four away from 50 grand. You have three lifelines untouched. Question number four is for £5,000. Have a look. Which of these mainland answer correctly? Then Fireman Griffin and Fireman Jones share a £1 million reward. As always, they've got three lifelines. They can go 50 50, they can phone a friend, or they can ask this very eager looking audience. Right, Tim, Darren, lots of luck. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Question number one is for £500. Here it comes. A traditional boomerang is made from which substance? Clay, stone, glass, wood. I'm pretty sure I know the answer to that one, Tim. Um, I think it's wood. I totally agree. So I'm happy with that. You happy with that, Tim? Yeah, I think so. Final answer. So right answer, you've got £500. <laughs> Tim, you're looking at this computer like it's a cage of rattlesnakes. It'll be, it'll be all right. There are no trick questions. Uh, I have to say, they do get harder as the money goes up, but there are no trick questions. This will guarantee you £1,000. Here it comes. Which of these entertainers famously wore a bowler hat in European capital cities is closest to London? Brussels, Madrid, Berlin, Rome. Have you got any idea, Tim? I'm... I think it's Brussels. OK, your reasoning being? It's, Rome's a long way. Yeah, I see that one. Berlin's a good way. Been to Berlin, it's a reasonable flight. Brussels doesn't take long to get to. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Madrid. Whereabouts in Spain is Madrid? You know, north, south, east, Madrid's west? right in the middle. I would have gone for Brussels myself as well. I know people can commute to Brussels to, to work, um, so which kind of indicates that it's the closest. <laughs> it's definitely Brussels. Okay. Let's play it. Final okay. answer, Brussels. Shall we? We'll do it. I'm with it. <laughs> I'm final answer, Brussels. It's the right answer. You've got £5,000. Right. <laughs> Man.
Max Miller, Charlie Chaplin, Frankie Howard, Tommy Cooper. Nice. I think Charlie Chaplin is looking favourite. Tommy Cooper was a fez. Fez, definitely, yeah. Max Miller. No hat at all, is it, Max Miller? Less hair than me. <laughs> Frankie Howard, no hat at no, all. I think I, it's Charlie Chaplin. Yeah, I would say. I'd be very surprised it wasn't, so I'll go along with that. Final answer, Charlie Chaplin. It's the right answer, you've got £1,000. <laughs> you How are you feeling? Yeah, pretty confident so far. <laughs> well, no, I mean, for guys who go into blazing <laughs> buildings or whatever, you're strangely yeah. sort of... Yeah, well, it's a different environment for us. Yeah. It's, uh, we're very used to burning buildings. We're not quite used to uh, computer screens and bright lights and uh, tricky questions, but hopefully... And the cameras. Do you love it? What, going to work every day? Yeah. Yeah, I do, yeah. 